Hey guys, Spina Dude here and welcome back to another video and today we are taking a look at the first ever Beasts of the Mesozoic figure on the channel. This is the second release Dromaeosaurus Albertensis from the Beasts of the Mesozoic Raptor series. Now I got this figure from Dan's Dinosaur so I want to send a thank you out to Dan for your great service and very efficient shipping as always. And now let's jump into the review but before we jump into the review I wanted to do a quick over... Uh, overview of the packaging for this Beast of the Mesozoic Raptor because it is absolutely spectacular. You can see that the Dromaeosaurus has a unique background here in a snowy environment. There you see this beautiful, absolute gorgeous art. I believe this was done by, so it says on the back, yes, Jonathan Kuo, I am correct. I recognize his style and this is an absolutely beautiful work of art. Let me just zoom in on that there a little bit. Just look at how gorgeous that raptor is. The coloration and the style of the feathering really just sells what kind of environment they're intending this animal to be in here, which is absolutely gorgeous. I love the piercing orange eye. And who says that feathered dinosaurs can't be scary? Because this thing looks absolutely terrifying in my opinion. But the second release, I believe it's only the second release uh, of for some of the raptor figures and for the new variants of the velociraptor, etc. have this foil printing on the Raptor series and the little Raptor footprint behind the Beast of the Mesozoic logo. So I'm not sure if you can see that very well on camera. Hopefully you can, but it looks absolutely gorgeous in person. And I believe that's only on the front. Yes, that is only on the front, but it is awesome. And this little thing comes off as well on the side, this little sleeve. And on the back it says collectible card inside and it gives some information on Dromaeosaurus there and that just slips onto the side. So the pa all the packaging is fairly the same for all the Raptors. So if you go on the back here, you have a checklist of all the Raptors in the series and it's fairly standard packaging. There's some standard Raptors on the side. I believe that's a Velociraptor, just art. And then there's the inside, which is a whole separate piece. So the packaging is the same for all of them, but the sleeve that slips onto the side is unique per creature that you get. In my case, the Dromaeosaurus here. And then there is a different insert depending on what kind of environment the animal is from. So that's the packaging. Absolutely gorgeous work on that. David Silva, these are all done by David Silva. And I'm gonna scooch forward my little fancy, whoopsie, just fell over, my fancy little card stand. So we can take a look at the collectible trading card. There is the full Dromaeosaurus Albertensis art by Jonathan Kuo. Probably one of, if not my favorite art piece out of the entire Raptor series. This thing is absolutely incredible. I love this. I want a full framed print of this, like a big framed print. I actually don't think there are prints of this for sale, but you know, David Silver, or Jonathan Kuo, if you happen to be watching this video, could you hit me up so I can get a big print of this to frame. I would absolutely love that. But anyway, on the back we have a picture of the Dromaeosaurus figure. It says running lizard and there's a bunch of information on Dromaeosaurus Albertensis there. You can pause the video if you want to read it. And there's a plug for creativebeast.com. So there is the trading card that comes with the Dromaeosaurus figure. We're gonna set that off to the side here for now. And now we're going to jump into taking a look at the Dromaeosaurus action figure itself. Now the Dromaeosaurus and the Linoraptor are my two absolute favorites from the Beast to the Mesozoic Raptor range. I do plan on getting a Linoraptor eventually. The Linoraptor has been out of stock literally everywhere, which is why I got the Dromaeosaurus. And this figure is just so stunning to look at. The detail is amazing. Of course, I know some people aren't the biggest fans of the Beast of the Mesozoic figures because of the gappiness and so the action figure nature of them. I think that they're very unique and they sort of fill a really unique niche in the dinosaur collecting community because they're not quite action figures. They're highly articulated, but they're not quite models at the same time. They have the quality and the detail of high-end models, but they have full articulation of typical action figures. So the first thing we're going to do is I wanted to remove the Dromaeosaurus from its base here, and we're going to take a look at the base quickly. Now all of the raptors have the same exact base, but they're just painted differently to reflect the environment that they're from. So here you can see that the Dromaeosaurus has a snowy painted environment. It's not the best paint I've seen in the world, but it's great that we have a base included with the figure 
as well. And it is very nicely detailed for what it is. Very lightweight, so they could save on plastic. It is hollow on the bottom, as you can see. The rocks are painted pretty nicely there. And there is a single ball and socket joint on the bottom to where you can attach the rods for displaying the Raptors. Now, I'm not going to be removing this rod as I did find the correct arrangement of the pieces that they included in the set. Uh, so my Raptor can stand on its own, which we'll talk about that more in just a few minutes coming up. But I will show you the additional pieces. Now, there is a single like holster piece for the Raptor just to lean on here. There is a medium-sized small ball joint rod that I do have uh, equipped for the Dromaeosaurus here. And there is a little bit of an elbow joint piece that connects so it gives a little bit of an angle to the holster. And then the rest of the parts that are included for displaying the Raptor is we have a large uh, rod here, as you can see, with a ball joint on the end and a uh, ball joint clip on the other side, and that is for positioning the Raptor in a pouncing position if you'd like, or just to have it, whoops, I just knocked things over, that's not good, and to have it standing tall if you'd like, and then there also is a very small ball joint, whoops, I just dropped it, that you can see right here, and uh, that just gives you, maybe if you wanted to have the Raptor really low to the ground, kind of prowling, then you can definitely use that. And then there is also a clip. Now the clip attaches in between the legs of the Raptor here around right underneath the hips. But unfortunately on the Dromaeosaurus, it does not attach. Because the Dromaeosaurus has extra floofy feathers because it is from a snowier environment. So the clip unfortunately does not attach all the way. It does kind of, but it likes to fall off. So that is a big downside to this figure, to this particular figure in my opinion, is that you cannot get it in as many dynamic poses because you cannot get the clip on it and this is not the kit just the case with my figure my good friend Eric aka Dino Man on YouTube also has the Dromaeosaurus but it is the first wave release of the Dromaeosaurus Albertensis and he also cannot get the clip to fit on the feathers here another issue that I have with the Dromaeosaurus while we're on topic of problems is that this toe claw comes off very easily. And the problem here with the claws on the Dromaeosaurus, let's scoot the base off to the side quickly while we're talking about this. And the problem with the claws on the Dromaeosaurus here is that if you look on this foot with the claws attached, you can see the, uh, the toe claw is of course articulated, that it is scooted all the way down on this peg that's holding the foot and the sickle claw in place. But if we scoot over to this one, you can see there is a gap. The foot refuses to slide all the way down on the peg there, which in turn does not give enough room for this toe claw to slide on completely, which is unfortunate. So it does stay on. I know Dino Man's does doesn't even fit on anymore, which is unfortunate, and you have to be really careful in positioning it because in some certain positions it will just pop off, and it is a very small piece, so it could get lost very easily. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that all of the figures come with a separate set of toes, and the toes are removable. Let's see if I can remove this one over here. There we go, you can see the toes are removable. And we do have a second set of toes that are in a lifted position. There we go, I just had to do it on the other foot because one of my alternate set of toes is unfortunately really tight so I have to work with maybe carving out the inside of the socket where the peg pops in to make it work better. But you can see what I mean, it just gives an alternate look to make it look like the raptor is running or walking. I think that is a great addition. And also, if we set the raptor down and bring the base in quickly, you can see in the corner of the base, if my camera will focus, there we go. It's a little bit hard to see because of the coloration, but there are pegs on the bottom of the base so you can store the alternate set of toes for the raptors. So that is fantastic. I just leave mine in the box for now because I don't want them to fall out. But that is a very thoughtful inclusion for the base. I also thought I would show that this set does come with instructions for those who are not familiar with the Beast and the Zoic Raptors. So if my camera will focus, there we are. So it just shows you how to assemble the Raptor. You do have to attach the tail and it shows you how to interchange the toes and store the toes in the base. and. 
arrange the clips and such. It is blank on the other side, but I thought I would mention that that is included in the set. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's focus on the actual detail and articulation of the Beasts of the Mesozoic or Dromaeosaurus Albertensis figure. So let's actually start at the head so we can change things up just a little bit. So the head is beautifully sculpted and painted. Absolutely love the menacing eye with the glossy paint put over it to give it a genuine wet look. The nostrils are carved out on the front of the snout as well, beautifully done. The interior of the mouth also has that same glossy paint to it to give it a genuine look of saliva on the interior of the mouth. The teeth are beautifully sculpted as well, no sloppiness on the paint either. And also the tongue is articulated. Now we do know that it is questioned now as to whether or not theropods could move their tongues, but if you'd like your raptor to move its tongue, it is on a ball joint there, which is great. Of course, the jaw is articulated. There is a little bit of a gap to it. It doesn't close completely, but if you wanted to force it shut, then it definitely could be shut like so. And I just love the way it looks with its mouth shut. Like the, the teeth are completely enclosed inside the mouth. And unfortunately my jaw was actually a little bit loose when I got it. It fell out quite easily, but I did put a little bit of nail polish on it. Thanks to the tip from my good friend Aiden, AKA KikiZilla101. And it did tighten up the jaw quite a bit. So there's a little bit of wobble, but it doesn't fall out quite as easily. Now moving down the neck, we do have a bunch of points of articulation. There is not too much of a range of motion you can see that it does have quite a bit of expressiveness and you can swing the head around but it's not quite as much articulation as I expected if I'm being honest but it still is nice to have that articulation and you can get a lot of expressiveness out of it looking at the stomach quickly really nice feather detail once again looks very fluffy and I absolutely love the color scheme on this figure I do forget what bird this one is based off of I do have to check it is a bird of prey and the colors are very reminiscent of a snowy owl, but I know it's not a snowy owl because uh, the the Troodon from the mountain accessory kit is based off of a snowy owl. But I will check on that and put it in an annotation on the video. But looking at the wings quickly, the wings have a great range of motion as far as articulation goes. You can see you can tuck them very close to the body, making them look very bird-like. And you can hide the hands almost completely as well, which is really cool. And then you can also extend them quite a bit and bring them out to the side and uh, also bring the hands up to show the claws as well, which is great. Very short primary feathers on the Dromaeosaurus, but I think they work for the style of the figure. And I also really like the way the hands look as well. I like that they didn't show any, oh, and there goes the toe claw again. That just fell off the foot. Let me scoot that back on. There we go. And the hands do look a little bit awkward from underneath because uh, if you move the arm out like so because of this like gap between them, but that was necessary for articulation purposes, of course, so you could have a good range of motion with the wings. So I'm not fussed by that personally and that's and that's something you're not going to see all the time especially if you're posing it realistically like having the wings close to the body like so I mean just look at that that looks so good there absolutely beautiful the body does have articulation in the waist here as well so you can move it just a little bit, not too much, not too excessive. The legs have quite a bit of articulation as well and are beautifully detailed. I love that he continued the feathers all the way down to the feet, like there's no skin showing on the hands or the feet or whatever, just some on the tip of the snout of the Dromaeosaurus. It really sells that this thing comes from a cold and snowy environment. But you can see there is a pivot joint at the hips there, like so. And then you can twist the joint at the knee to give it a little bit more range of motion. The ankle and the foot cannot twist, but you can twist it at the knee there like so. And then of course you can move the leg forward and back. My joint's a little tight right there. Same down here and then right down at the foot as well. You can move that. And then the sickle claw of course is articulated as well. The base of the tail also has a rotation point and you can rotate that completely upside down like so and then rotate the tail itself so you, it doesn't look quite as awkward uh, having the tail sort of out straight like so and then you can rotate it so it's pointing up and then rotate the tail like so so it looks like it's pointing up for the dromaeosaurus i personally like the tail like it's pointing up and sort of like a threatened position i think that looks really cool and then the tail itself is really cool in that it has a bendy wire on the inside so you can bend it in any way 
that you want, up or down or to the side a little bit. I like mine having a slight curve pointing upwards, like so. So when you look at the figure as a whole, and there goes the toe claw again. That is my biggest problem with this figure, definitely, is that single toe claw. It's been very annoying. But I really like the way it looks with the tail sort of pointing straight up in the air, with kind of that eye spot on the feathers as well. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. But anyway, let's bring out the base again and see if we can get him standing. And there goes the toe claw once again. It's a real shame because of how much I love the appearance of the Dromaeosaurus with the heavy feathers on it, and then the toe claws falling off all the time. Now I know that's not David Silva's fault, I think he's done an absolutely amazing job on this figure overall, it's just that that seems to be a factory issue or something with the Dromaeosaurus, because both me and Eric, Dino Man, have the same exact problem. But anyway, there is the Dromaeosaurus in all of its glory, I think it is a spectacular looking figure overall. But do keep in mind that these are figures that you're not going to be playing with all the time. These are figures that you're going to be posing in different various positions and just leaving them displayed because they are not meant to be played with. I could see where they could be very fragile in some cases. I did have to apply uh, nail polish to a couple of the joints because they were very loose when I got them. And some of the joints are still very tight, so I have to work with those a little bit more. But... It, to just to display it like this and look at it, it is a really, really beautiful figure. David Silva did absolutely amazing work. It is a shame that because of the extra floofiness, I cannot attach this clip onto the hips to give it more dynamic poses, etc. That along with the toe claw that falls off all the time is my, are my two biggest problems with this figure overall. But at the end of the day, it is a beautiful display piece. But I just want to drive home those two criticisms that I have with it because if you do want to get this Dromaeosaurus, this is the only sculpt that I know that has those glaring issues. So just make sure that you know that those could be a big problem for you when you get this particular raptor. But as for the other raptors, I haven't heard any similar complaints about them. But we're going to do a quick measurement of this figure. And for the measurement, I'm going to bring the tail out all the way and bring the head out all the way like so and scoot it back. So that's basically the full length of the figure right there. And Marvin, why don't you bring out the flexi ruler? Thank you, Marvin. All right, we've got our trusty flexi ruler here, so let's give this Dromaeosaurus a measure. So in terms of length from the tip of the snout to the tip of the tail, we are looking at exactly 12 inches, one foot actually, which is about 30 centimeters. And in terms of the, high, the highest point at this stance that I have it in, which is probably the most stable stance you can get it in, is about six inches, which is about 15 and a half centimeters. So this is a sizable figure and whoopsie, timber. Let me readjust you there, buddy. And once again, you can see how this figure is not meant to be fiddled with because the slightest touch and it will sort of fall off of its base. But for a quick comparison, I wanted to bring out the Papo 2016 Feathered Velociraptor because a lot of people have this figure and it is a, another Dromaeosaur figure. So I wanted to drive home uh, the size of the Dromaeosaurus Albertensis over here. Just with these two next to each other, you can see the glaring issues with the Papo Feathered Velociraptor. Of course, the Papo Feathered Velociraptor was a step in the right direction. I think it is a really cool looking figure still, but it does have a lot of problems in terms of being an attempt at an accurate Dromaeosaur figure. And in my opinion, this Dromaeosaurus and the rest of the Beasts of the Mesozoic Raptor figures just really nail what a Dromaeosaurid actually was. But anyway, guys, I think that is going to do it for today's look at the Beast of the Mesozoic Dromaeosaurus Albertensis figure. If you want to get this beautiful figure for yourself or any of the other Beast of the Mesozoic Raptor series figures, you can get them all at dansdinosaurs.com. I'll put a link down below in the description. So anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Also leave a comment telling me what you think of this Dromaeosaurus action figure. So thank you so much guys for watching and as always, I will see you in my next video. So take care and bye bye.